O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall sing your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. O Lord, have mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save your people, and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Endue your ministers with righteousness, and make your chosen people joyful. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord because there is none other that fights for us but only you, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. Do not take the Holy Spirit from us. The Prophet Daniel, Chapter 2 Therefore Daniel went into Arioch whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went in and said this to him, Don't destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show to the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said to him, I have found a man of the children of the captivity of Judah, who will make known to the king the interpretation. The king answered Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen? 
and its interpretation. Daniel answered before the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot be shown to the king by wise men, enchanters, magicians or soothsayers. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head on your bed are these. As for you, O king, your thoughts came on your bed as to what would happen hereafter. And he who reveals secrets has made known to you what will happen. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any other living person, but to the intent that my interpretation may be made known to the king, and that you may know the thoughts of your heart. You, O king, saw, and behold, a great image, this image which was mighty and whose brightness was excellent, stood before you, and its appearance was terrifying. As for this image, its head was of fine gold, its breast and its arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of brass, its legs of iron, its feet part iron and part clay. You looked until the stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet that were of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver and the gold were broken into pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no place was found for them. On the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell its interpretation before the king. You, O king, are king of kings, to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power, the strength, and the glory. Wherever the children of men dwell, he has given the animals of the field and the birds of the sky into your hand, and has made you ruler over, of, over them all. You are the head of gold. After you, another kingdom will arise that is inferior to you, and another third kingdom of brass, which will rule all over the earth. The fourth kingdom will be as strong as iron, because iron breaks in pieces and subdues all things. And as iron that crushes all these, it will break in pieces and crush. Whereas you saw the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, it will be a divided kingdom. But there will be in it the strength of the iron, because you saw the iron mixed with the miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part iron and part clay, so the kingdom will be partly strong and partly broken. Whereas you saw the iron mixed with miry clay, they will mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they won't cling one to another, even as iron does not mix with clay. In the days of these kings, the God, king of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed, nor will its sovereignty be left to another people, but it will break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and will stand forever. Because you saw that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to the king what will happen hereafter. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer sweet odours to him. And the king answered to Daniel and said, Of a truth, your God is the God of gods and the king of kings, a revealer of secrets, since you have been able to reveal this secret. But the king made Daniel great and gave him many gifts and made him rule over the province of Babylon, 
to be the chief governor over all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel requested of the king, and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel was in the king's gate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 12. Then they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to trap him with his own words. When they came, they said to him, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and do not court anyone's favour. You show no partiality, but only teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Tell us, is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But he saw through their hypocrisy and said to them, Why do you test me? Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. So they brought one and gave it to him. And he said to them, Whose image is this? Whose is this inscription? They replied, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar the things that belong to Caesar, and to God the things that belong to God. And so they were utterly amazed at him. Then the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, also came to him and asked him, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, that man must marry the widow and father children for his brothers. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married, and when he died, he had no children. The second married her and died without any children, and likewise the third. In fact, none of the seven had children. Finally, the woman died too. In the resurrection, when they rise again, whose wife will she be? For all seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Aren't you deceived for this reason, because you do not know the Scriptures nor the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Now as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not therefore the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. Now one of the experts in the law came and heard them debating. And when he saw that Jesus had answered well, he said to him, Master, which of the commandments is the most important? Jesus answered, The most important is, Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The expert in the law said to him, That is true, teacher. You are right to say that he is one, and there is no one else beside him. To love him with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all of the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that the man had answered thoughtfully, he said to him, You are truly not far from the kingdom of God. But after that, no one dared any longer to ask him questions. While Jesus was teaching in the temple court, he asked the people, how is it that the experts in the law say that Christ is David's son? For David himself, by the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. But if David himself calls him Lord, how can he be his son? And the large crowd listened to him with delight. In his teachings, Jesus also said, Watch out for the experts in the law. They like walking around in long robes and giving elaborate greetings in the marketplaces. They like also the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honour at banquets. They devour the widow's property and as a show make long prayers. 
these men will receive a severe punishment. And then he sat down opposite the offering box and watched as the crowd put coins into it. Many rich people were throwing in large amounts of money. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins which were worth less than a penny. He called his disciples over and said to them, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the offering box than the others, for they gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, has put in what she had to live on, everything that she had. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Collect for Peace O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works proceed, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that by you, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Collect for aid against all perils. Lighten our darkness, we beg you, O Lord, and by your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for the work of your faithful servants around the world, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, tonight and for evermore. Amen. <laughs>